Well, hey gamers, we're back at it again. Today, we're going to be adding some asteroids to this game. That's right, we're overlapping with Space Rocks. We're finally making a collab with the game we're doing in, honestly, probably a couple weeks. So, today we need to add some asteroid objects that are going to move through the room. Initially, they are going to be indestructible, destroys the player when they collide with them, and they're going to be able to block gamma rays. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. So, first off, we need to make us a new asteroid object. We're going to go into Objects, right click, Create, Object. You should be used to this now. First off, let's name it OB, nope, OBJ, Asteroid. You could also name it OBJ Rock, but that would be silly. Anyway, let's go ahead and assign it a new sprite going to be under asteroids, OBJ asteroid large. Yours might not look like my large asteroid. I goofed up in my files and I somehow lost this one specifically, so I remade it. Um, it has a nice mustache now. Anyway, let's continue. So, let's go ahead and assign its sprite. We're going to set its speed to 1. Now we know that variable already exists, so we can go ahead and set it right here. To one. Next, we're going to add a step event. First off, we're going to drag an assign variable block. We're going to add one to the image angle variable. Now, what do I mean by adding one to it? We're adding one relatively to the angle. So what does this do? It basically makes it so that our sprite is constantly being moved every step by one degree. So, in essence, it's rotating it. It's going to make your asteroid rotate as it goes around the room. It's going to make it look a little bit more natural and look a little bit more fun than just having a static asteroid randomly going up and down the room. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and continue. So we're now going to go ahead and program the asteroid so that when it's outside the room, it's going to change direction and start moving toward a random point within the center of the room. So how do we do that? We're going to give it an outside room event. should be under other, outside room. So we're going to drag in a set point direction block. We're going to set our X to be room width divided by 2 plus I range our old friend we're going to make that range between negative 350 and 350 and of course we need to do the y variable let's go ahead and extend this out so we can see the entire equation Y variable is going to be room underscore width divided by 2. You're starting to get the hang of it. I bet you know what's coming next. Plus, I random range. We're going to make that range between, you guessed it, negative 350 and 350. Alright, so what does that make it do? It makes it so whenever it goes outside of the room, it changes its direction. It makes it a little bit more kind of like organic and makes it so these objects appear a little bit more random uh, rather than just always following one set direction. All right, up next we're gonna have a collision with the Gamma Ray. So let's go and make a collision with OBJ Gamma Ray. So what does it want us to do over here? It wants us to make it so it runs the SCR pop effect script. Let's find that execute script. We only have one script, so it's okay. It's easy to find it. All right, now the block needs to be assigned to the other object. So we're gonna make it so that gamma ray explodes instead. So we're going to make it set to other. Finally, we're going to drag in a destroy instance block. And what we're gonna do is also set that to other. So what's this going to do? Well, it's going to make it so that whenever a gamma ray hits our big asteroid, it just explodes and that's it. Uh, it doesn't destroy the, or the asteroid, it just destroys the gamma ray. Pretty cool, right? 
All right, so now it seems like we've got everything we need, right? No, silly, you're wrong. We need to make it so that this thing spawns. This is where our alarm 10 is going to be used. Yes, we're finally using that last alarm. So let's go to our level controller. We're gonna go ahead and add an alarm number 10. Now, you may be asking, but, 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 but Mr. Billings, I added like 10 more bubbles than I needed and I already used up all my alarms. Well, just switch out one of your alarms that you already have and make that one the one for this. I recommend just switching out whatever you have for alarm 10 now because that makes things less confusing. Also, I didn't tell you to add those things and you should be following along a little bit more closely. Anyway, I'm off of my soapbox. So, alarm 10. Let's make this thing create an instance. It's this light bulb right here. Boop. We're going to create OBJ Asteroid, and it's going to be created similar to everything else. X at room underscore width minus 64. I don't know why I clicked relative here. And Y is going to be I random range. And that's going to be between 0 and Sorry, right, kids, I also have to zoom in occasionally. It's going to be between zero and room height. Now, some of you guys have actually asked me why I put spaces between here and why I like it better. I just think one, it's easier to read, and two, it's good programming. Other programming languages require you to do this, whereas GML is a little bit more lenient on it. It's uh, another good practice to do. Okay, again, I'm getting off my soapbox. Let me go ahead and extend this so you guys can see all the code that's there. And up next, we need to set our alarm countdown so that way we have more than one asteroid that appears. So we're setting alarm number 10. We're going to make it so this appears randomly. I random underscore range. At this point, we feel like we should probably just set a macro on our keyboard to always have that up. So we're going to make it somewhere between 240 and 480 steps. So that way, once this alarm goes off, it's going to still pop off every about every two to three seconds. All right. Now, am I missing anything? Well, of course I am, you fool. Uh, I need to make sure that we have something in the create event. Listen, I'm not going to get caught on my own thing. So let's go ahead and set our alarm cap down here. Alarm number 10. And we're going to make it, I want these to pop up pretty early. So I'm going to go ahead and put this at 250. And for clarity's sake, just in case you need it for later, you can name it Asteroids. All right, let's see if I goofed anything up, kids. All right, got some bubbles. Whoa, okay, I'm seeing something there. That's interesting. Whoa. So, I can tell you this. The bubbles, they're still working. These asteroids are behaving actually as programmed. However, they're not spawning, I think, as we would want them to. So let's see where I might have messed up or where I can improve on it. So first off, let's look at alarm number 10. We set our alarm countdown, I think, pretty well. So OBJ Asteroid is at room width up. You know what? I'm seeing where I messed up already. I put room width minus 64. So that means it would automatically spawn at the other side of the room. So it needs to be room width plus 64. That way we know it's always spawning somewhere within the room's area. Let's see if that fixed it. If not, we can improve it. Oh, there. Oh, he's just walking in from the side now. Exactly as I wanted him to. And, yep, showering him with my gamma ray, and it does nothing. It just creates beautiful little sparks. Alright, well, these guys are starting to work as intended. So. 
Next time, we will start to give these guys some lives and make them a little bit nicer to work with. We'll see you next time. Oh, it's so loud.